Welcome everyone to this uh, webinar, uh, wherein I will be talking about uh, the mantra to be a successful trader. Uh, myself, uh, Amar Singh from Angel Broking. So uh, the topics that I would be uh, covering in this webinar, the structure is that I would be talking about mindfulness. That is, uh, uh, first of all, our uh, mindset, our psychology. Second is money management and uh, method of trading. And uh, this uh, webinar would be more concentrated on as to how you can really excel as a trader. What is it that you require to know and to become a really successful trader? And uh, how can you uh, make it big in the markets? Then uh, also I'll be talking about be a disciplined trader because discipline is something which is very important and essential uh, when when in trading because uh, trading gives you complete freedom to do whatever you want to do. So I'll be talking about that. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, I'll be talking about learn to maintain your trading diary. So you should have a uh, no. You should be making notes of uh, what you're what you're trading, when you're trading, how much you're trading. Many things, so I'll be talking about that in detail. And lastly, I'll be talking about the right implementation to become a pro, that is a professional. If you really want to become a professional, uh, then what is the way forward for it? So these are the areas which I'll be covering. So the first uh, uh, section which I'll be talking about is mindful, mindfulness, and uh, that is uh, and money management and method of trade. So generally what happens is that uh, uh, the first time a newcomer, comes to the market, someone who's, uh, who doesn't understand the markets and he comes into the market. So he faces three paths, that is three roads are in front of him, which leads into a forest that's full of treasures and dangers. So the first path for investors goes through the sunniest areas. Most of those who take it come out alive, if not much richer. So if one is an investor, one is buying and holding for a long period of time, uh, then uh, one can, if the markets are, uh, in a bull run and you're able to make good money then very good if the markets are in a bear uh, in a bear phase and you're still uh, holding your stocks then then you can continue holding them for a long period of time but then again that's not a good idea but the point here what i'm trying to say is that uh, if you are an investor then you still uh, can stay uh, for quite some time another path that is for traders leads into the heart of the forest many travelers disappear but those who come out look rich so trading is an area which can make you uh, make you very successful, but it's very different from investing. So that is something which you need to understand. And the third is a shortcut that takes gamblers into the swamp. So what it means here is that the gamblers are those who don't have a strategy, who don't have a reason why they are trading. They're just trading on their mood swings. They don't have they don't have any fixed reason or uh, or or, uh, or uh, why they are trading so 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 they are just trading for the sake of trading they are not seeing how they are trading they are not analyzing their own trades so they are just it's a it's a joy ride for them so they are definitely going to uh, get hit in the markets so that's the third which is a shortcut now the question is how can you tell which path is which you must choose your way carefully because if you if you don't you'll end up on the gambler's path especially since it crosses both the investors and the traders it trails investors have a have a, a trail which is there in the forest traders also have a trail which is there in the forest they crisscross at times a gamblers can be on both an investor and a trader that means he really doesn't know he doesn't have a clue as to what he is doing so you need to each one of us needs to really look at uh, look at our trading pattern what we are doing why we are doing what is it that we want to achieve because till the time we really don't ask these questions and really decide on the uh, answers, uh, we will always move in circles. So, so what we need to understand is that trading and investing, they are partly rational and partly emotional. So winning gambler, one who's made a lot of money, he brags about his positions and misses sell signals. So what happens? He could be sitting on paper profits. Whereas a fearful trader beaten up by the market becomes cautious beyond measure so as soon as his stock ticks down a bit he sells violating his own rules so if you have some rules but you're not following those rules then you will have to check your emotional uh, emotions because that would have to be uh, that would have to fall in line that would have to come under control 
so when that stock rises overshooting his original profit target he can no longer stand the pain of missing the rally and buys way above his planned entry point so someone who's fearful in the market uh, he will not buy at his at his predefined level but if the stock starts moving up and then it moves up significantly and then he might feel that he's missing the bus then he might jump onto that trade and then he might find that he's entered at a very high level so the point is that you might have the rules but are you following the rules so trading that's why it's partly rational partly emotional so original plan to uh, buy may have been rational but implementing it creates an emotional storm so you you have say for example you have a strategy you have an entry point you have an exit point but the moment the price comes near to the entry point you're not able to take that decision because it's your emotions which is overriding your decision making capability so you're not able to take the decision and then you go into a, a, a i would say a do or a do or don't uh, situation and then finally if the market starts moving in your favor and it has moved substantially up say for example you are bullish on the stock in forces and the stock starts moving up and say your buying price was our entry price or would have been somewhere around 1000 but now it's moved to 1030 40 say for example then ideally you should have bought at 1000 but now you're buying at a higher level so this is something which why why one is doing this because it's more of the emotions which is uh, overpowering us and not letting us take the right decision when it is required so emotional traders do not pursue their best long-term interests prices reflect intelligent behavior of rational investors and traders but they also reflect screaming mass hysteria the more active the market the more traders are emotional so if the markets are very active if the stock is very active you'll find that people are more emotionally attached so so you have to be very careful and you have to see that you're not getting emotionally attached to the trades and rational individuals can become a minority surrounded by those with uh, sweaty palms pounding hearts and clouded minds so what so what happens is that uh, if you're a rash if you are rational in the market you are in the minority you are the one who you will be the one who will be ultimately making money consistently in the market but if you become tense, if you become overjoyed, if you become very sad, if you become fearful in your trades, that means you are part of the majority. So part being part of the majority means that you will, your decisions will be clouded with your emotions. So you'll not be able to take the right decisions when it is required. So this becomes something which is very important. So markets, if you look at the markets, markets are more efficient during flat trading ranges when people are apt to use their heads. So if the if a stock is trading in a range bounce, for example, uh, a stock is trading between uh, between 500 and 600 consistently. So so and if you are watching that particular stock, so you are very cool and calm because you see that the stock uh, comes uh, to uh, 500 and then bounces back to 600 and from 600 it comes down to 500. But now the stock has reached the 600 on the upside and it goes to 650, 700, 750, 800, 850, 900. Then one becomes one tends to become other. Or the people who are participating in that particular stock tend to become more emotional because they because they are they they were used to seeing the stock moving in that range but now it's um, it's broken that range so they really don't know what they have to do so that's what uh, uh, what makes people become more emotional and that is why people grow they grow less efficient during trends so when there is a strong trend in the market you'll find that majority of the people are more, are more emotional than rational Whereas if the markets are trading sideways, people are more rational rather than emotional. And if you are rational, then uh, then you you stand a chance in the market because rational people make dangerous enemies. So it is easier and uh, it is easier to take money from traders who are excited by a fast moving trend because emotional behavior is more primitive and easier to predict. So for example, the stock is simply rallying and you are also jumping into when the rallies has happened significantly. So like you, there could be hundreds and thousands of people who are jumping in this stock, but maybe that's not a good time to buy because it's your emotional behavior which has led you to take that action. And emotional behavior is very primitive and that's easier, easier to predict. So what you need to understand is that you have to watch your capital, that is your investment corpus which you have, as carefully as a professional scuba diver watches his hair supply. Someone who's going for scuba diving, diving when he's inside the water, he has a limited air supply. So he'll have to watch out for the air supply 
because he has to also come up to the surface of the water so he just can't let his air supply finish in uh, deep in the uh, uh, deep in the sea so so similarly you have to be cautious and you have to be careful and you have to watch out for the capital which you deploy so to be a successful trader you must keep your cool at all times and take money from aroused amateurs because if you are cool that means you are not emotional if you are not emotional that means you are rational that means that you are on the minority the minority side so the probability the possibility and the chance of your making money is very high as compared to those who are emotional so what you need to remember is that trading is a battle so when you pick up your weapon and put your life on the line would you rather be drunk or sober so if trading is a battle and you are asked to go into the battle would you rather be sober while going into the battle or would you rather go drunk into the battle naturally you would be sober because you have to prepare yourself you have to choose your fight you have to go in when you are ready and you have to quit after you've done what you've planned so all this can be done only when you are sober all this can be done only when you have your emotions under control because if you are letting your emotions go in every direction that means all the trades that you are taking all the decisions that you are making generally they tend to be wrong so a man who is cool and sober calmly picks his fight he enters and leaves when he chooses and not when some bully throws him a challenge so if someone uh, this is just to give an example if someone uh, if someone provokes you and you get angered and you get into a fight with that person who is the loser you are because you have you are spending your energy you are spending your wasting your time on someone who actually does not deserve your time nor your attention nor your uh, nor, nor you need to spend your energy so same is in the market if you are if you are sober if you are calm if you are composed you are and you are rational then you stand a chance because then if then you will be looking at every trade from a very rational and from a very logical perspective otherwise you, what will happen you will be looking at every trade from an emotional perspective so discipline is necessary for success in most endeavors so whatever uh, we do in life the discipline is very important but especially in markets because they have no external controls because market can gives you market gives you complete freedom to do whatever you want to do in the market buy at any level sell at any level buy any quantity sell any quantity so as long as you have enough money in your, in your account no one will stop you and you have to watch yourself because no one else will except the margin clerk so the amount that is in your account if the margin is getting depleted then you might get a call to replenish your margin so you can put the stupidest or the most self destructive trades and as long as you have money in your account no one will stop you or maybe you wouldn't listen to people but you need to you need to understand that the market come gives you complete freedom and we are not used to such freedom that's the reason that there has to be rules that's the reason you have to be rational that's the reason you have to be logical so i talked about uh, on uh, slightly on the money management aspect i talked about the mind that is the psychology uh, talk here on technical analysis i won't be covering technical analysis in detail because i have got uh, i've done many webinars on technical analysis so i would recommend that you should definitely whenever you get an opportunity you should uh, watch those webinars it will really help you significantly but i'll just be briefly talking about the key elements of technical analysis a technical analysis is a study of market action you can call it a mass psychology primarily through the use of charts for the purpose of forecasting future price trends and uh, the market action here includes the price volume and open interest so if you're looking at the cash segment uh, there is a equity segment so you have to look at the price and the uh, uh, volume but if you are looking at the futures and options trading in futures and options segment then you should also be looking at the open interest and uh, and if you really uh, uh, don't technical analysis well if you are able to identify trends and can really help you significantly uh, precise your entry points your exit po exit points your book profit points your stop loss uh, stop loss trigger points as well as your trade so why technical analysis works basically there are three major factors which Uh, come into play one is that market action discounts everything whatever price you are seeing at any given point of time be it of the index nifty or be it of any stock all the major fundamentals are already discounted in the price at that given moment of time so what it effectively means uh, it it means is that uh, you don't need to know the reason why something is happening but you can be rest assured that whatever is happening and even if it is not known to the majority of the people still that is being reflected in the price of that particular stock Other particular index. So 
so what you need to look at is clearly the price of the stock or the or the or the value of the index here i would like to add is that technical analysis works best in most liquid markets so if you are looking at stocks which are highly illiquid and you are looking at uh, through it through technical analysis that's not a good idea because there would be very few participants market participants for that particular stock so ideally technical analysis works best in where we have large volumes and then uh, the second is prices moving trends uh, trends are basically we have three types of trends you have an uptrend a downtrend and a sideways trend so uptrend is a, is a bull bull market and a downtrend is a bear market and sideways is more of a consolidation so prices always move in trends but but what you need to remember is that trends are generally there only for 20 to 30 percent of the time the rest of the time the market straight sideways so if you can have a, a strategy when the markets are trading uh, sideways you have a strategy to trade and when the markets are trending they have another strategy to trade so you can make a lot of money if you can if you can identify it. adx is one indicator which can tell you where whether the market is trading or trending i would advise all of you that please uh, you can uh, you can go to google, uh, google and uh, look up this indicator adx uh, that's a very good uh, indicator for telling whether the stock is trending or non trending whether it's overheated or whatever so you get a lot of information there and uh, apart from that history repeats itself so what has happened in the past will again happen in the future so if you can study the charts if you can study the historical patterns if you can study why the market uh, behaved in a particular manner uh, in the past it can give you an edge and you'll also have a better understanding and also the best part is a technical analysis since it captures the price it captures the mass psychology so you'll find that uh, the major levels support and resistance levels which are there on the charts could be spanning decades uh, they act as very strong support and uh, resistance levels so you can use it uh, use it for uh, for further analysis as well and one of the greatest strengths of technical analysis is its adaptability to virtually any trading medium and time dimension so when i'm talking about any trading mini, uh, medium i mean it could be equities it could be commodities it could be currencies it could be indian markets japanese american chinese european any market that you can talk of and time dimension what i mean by time dimension is a technical analysis works on intraday charts on short term charts on long term charts it works on all uh, time frames so that's again a beauty so there is no area of trading in either stocks or futures where these principles do not apply so the the chartists can easily follow as many markets as desired which is generally not true of his fundamental counterpart so if you're in fundamental analysis you can you will be able to do limited analysis but technical analysis gives you the complete uh, um, uh, you can see everything whichever stock you want to see but uh, but you shouldn't get uh, too much confused in watching too many stocks at the same time because that that will lead you to do more analysis and you will not be able to take a decision so you should limit your uh, uh, number of stocks which you are following even on technical analysis depending upon what is your time horizon another advantage that a technician has is the big picture by following all the markets he gets an excellent feel for what the markets are doing in general and avoids the tunnel vision that can result from following only one group of markets so say for example there is a fund there is an analyst who tracks fundamental analyst who is tracking only the banking sector so he wouldn't know what's happening in the automobile sector what's happening in the pharma sector what's happening in the infrastructure sector what's happening in the telecom sector but if someone is using technical analysis and he's looking at the indices uh, nifty indices of all these major uh, uh, sectors so he'll be able to know okay now it sector sector is looking up so there's a possibility that there could be a rally in it stocks oh pharma uh, pharma uh, nsc pharma index is now uh, looking up uh, firms so there's a possibility that pharma stocks could so you get that early moving advantage and also the best part is you can track gold you can track currency because if the currency is appreciating that is from 65 is coming to 64 and 63 that's not good for the export uh, exporting companies so you can have a view of that as well so that's the major advantage so looking at uh, the um, these uh, technical analysis uh, this uh, uh, if you look at this particular uh, uh, slide which i'll be talking about basically it it says as to uh, what is your uh, uh, trading uh, time frame so you see that uh, there are people who are looking at yearly charts and quarterly charts and monthly charts then again weekly charts and daily charts so if you're a, a, a long-term trader you want to hold on to your position then ideally monthly weekly and daily is is good you should look at that 
uh, if you want to hold your position for years then maybe you can look at quarterly monthly weekly charts if you're swing swing trader that is you want to trade from a short term perspective maybe uh, two to two, two days three days or maybe less than a week then you're looking at a weekly chart a daily chart an hourly chart that's best for you if you're an intraday trader then ideally you can do, you should look at the daily chart and then you look at the hourly chart and then you look at the 10 minute chart for the same stock or the same index so the daily chart when you look at the long term you do have to look at the trend whether the trend is up whether the trend is down i have covered all this extensively in, uh, in my uh, earlier webinar so i would recommend that you should uh, uh, watch them as well apart from that if you're extremely those uh, that's called hap those who are trading high frequency they even use tick data for uh, for intraday trading so so you can look at this so now we come to the next part is uh, be a disciplined uh, trader be a disciplined trader so uh, do not uh, first of all do not let your emotions fluctuate with the up and down of your capital uh, generally what happens is that uh, if you are making if you are making money then uh, you would be very uh, very happy and then you could be taking some some trades which you really should not be taking because your strategy or your system is not uh, is not uh, uh, identifying those trades but likewise if you are losing money or your or your capital is down from where you started and then you get emotional and then you and then you uh, take some trades which again you shouldn't be taking so what you need to really understand that uh, that if you can get a hold of your emotions while trading then you are miles 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 ahead of the majority of the people but if you still continue to trade with your emotions and then then the market will not uh, let you make money easily that's something which is which is uh, which is uh, which is 100 percent true so somewhere or the other uh, you have to get out of your emotions on a, then only you will make money then the, the second is be consistent and even temper so you have to be consistent means if a signal if a strategy generates a signal for you then you ideally should take that trade you shouldn't let it pass because again you are second guessing the the strategy which is not a good thing so if a trade is generated you take a trade you put a stop loss because that's something very important and then if you have a target you can put a target or if it's a trading uh, stop loss you can have a trading stop loss the third is judge yourself not by the outcome but by your process so if you have a process if you have rules that i will do the, if this this happens i will take a trade then you should judge yourself not uh, by the outcome means what is whether the trade has resulted in, uh, in, in in being positive or negative you should judge yourself on the outcome on the process whether you have followed the entire process or not because if you follow the process consistently you can be rest assured that you will make money consistently in the markets next is know what you are going to do when the market does what it is going to do what here i mean is that that you need to have a complete plan of action as to what you will do if the market goes in your favor what you will do if the market goes against you if you don't have answers to these two questions then i would say you could be in big trouble every now and then the impossible can and will happen sometimes we are caught uh, we are caught off guard and we see that something has happened somewhere in the world and we see a major uh, uh, sell off happening in the markets and then everything goes for a toss so what you need to tell yourself on a regular basis on a daily basis that anything that is impossible today can happen because it does happen at times so you have to be prepared for any eventuality because if you want to be in this game of trading for a long haul in for the long haul then you will have to be prepared for eventualities know each day what your plan and your contingencies are for the next day what is your plan for the day and what is your plan for the next day and next you should know what can i win and what can i lose what is it that i'm likely to win and what can i lose what are the probabilities of either happening? So these are certain questions which if you regularly keep on asking yourself, you'll find that you will move on a path of becoming a disciplined trader. And what separates winners from losers is, is, the, is the way of handling profits. Because great traders adjust their trading to the money they have at any one time. So if your account is getting depleted, you're taking some losses, then you should never over leverage your position. Ideally, you should trade small and you should uh, you shouldn't either risk more than two percent to three percent of your total capital on a particular trade and uh, and uh, and then only you you can once your uh, capital comes back to the original level then you can start building onto onto further trades 
and stop worrying only about how you enter a trade. The key is to know at all times when you will exit. This is a major uh, point. What I would like to highlight is that majority of the traders, majority of the investors are, are clearly fixated on when to enter, when to enter, when to enter a trade. But what you need to understand if you really want to become successful, then yes, when to enter is important. But equally important or even more important is when to exit. What are the conditions under which you will exit your trade? That is a question which you should have an answer when you enter a trade. Then uh, the next uh, area which I'll be talking about is learn to maintain your trading diary. Generally, what happens is that many intelligent people sleepwalk through the markets. That is, their eyes are open but their minds are shut. They are driven by emotions and they keep repeating their mistakes. So it is okay to make mistakes, but it's not okay to repeat them. When you make a mistake for the first time, it shows that you are alive searching and experimenting. Repeating a mistake is a neurotic symptom. So what I'm trying to say here is that, uh, is that many of the people, they are, they are in the markets with their eyes open, but their minds are shut because they are driven by emotions. They are thinking emotionally. So to be a successful trader, you must accept total responsibility for your decisions and actions. You cannot blame anyone else uh, for, for your uh, results. You have to take the complete responsibility. And the best part is that good traders keep good records. So if you really want to excel uh, in your trading, you have to maintain good records because it's a very nice thing that what gets measured gets managed. So if you don't maintain a record of your trades, how can you measure your performance? How can you measure? How can you rate your progress? How can you learn from your mistakes? So those who do not learn from the past are doomed to repeat it. So if you are if you are uh, if you are trading the same way and you are not getting good results, so you will have to look at it. There is that why you are what are you doing? And secondly, why are you doing it? If you can do an analysis of this, then probably you will be on the right track. So if money is a problem, say for example, if uh, keeping an Viewing records of all expenditures is certain to uncover wasteful tendencies. Some people they are extravagant, so so if uh, so they can what they can do is that if they can start maintaining a record of all the expenditure, they'll be able to identify what are the uh, wasteful tendencies. Keeping scrupulous records turns a spotlight on a problem and allows you to improve. Uh, scrupulous records means that uh, consistent records you are keeping your records. So what it means is that you can look at it from time to time and you can improve upon yourself. So an essential record that shows the balance in your account at the end of each month is called the equity curve. This is something which I would recommend definitely to those who are uh, interested in becoming a successful trader and are serious. What you need to do is that every uh, end of the month, uh, you you uh, write down what is your capital. And then the next month, what's the, what's the capital, whether it is increasing or decreasing. So over a 12-month period, you'll find that you can plot a curve, equity curve. So plot it on a chart whose angle will tell you whether you are in gear with the market. Generally, the goal is a steady uptrend punctuated by shallow declines. So overall, your equity curve should move up. Uh, yes, there can be some uh, losses also, but that has to be gradual. If your equity curve slows down, uh, slopes down, it shows that you are not in tune with the markets and must reduce the size of your trades. And a jagged equity curve tends to be a sign of impulsive trade. So if you are seeing that your equity curve is not uh, is not uh, uh, steady and it is uh, very volatile. So it means that it is a clear sign that you are trading emotionally, you are trading impulsively, which is not a good thing. So if you are serious about learning to trade, start with a relatively small account and set a goal of learning to trade rather than making a lot of money in a hurry. Because if you learn to trade right, then money is a byproduct, it will automatically come. Next, I uh, talk about the right implementation. To become a pro most traders look at charts but very few look at themselves that is an oversight since personality is a hugely important part of trading so an equity curve holds up a mirror to your performance you will find that professionals keep equity charts for themselves and their clients when you start tracking your equity curve you make a big step towards joining the pros Use a spreadsheet to track your equity curve. So if you really want to become a professional trader, then you should start tracking your equity curve month on month. If you are a short-term trader, then I would recommend that 
a week on week is also a good idea but if you are if you are holding your positions for a long period of time then a month on month is, is a better idea so it would would be a factor of your uh, trading discipline but from a short uh, a high frequency uh, trader can be a weekly equity curve for a uh, for a for a medium term to long term is a monthly equity curve so your equity curve is a yardstick of your performance an orderly uptrend is better than a steep uptrend with deep drawdowns your equity curve should keep rising and if it turns down you have to make a more defensive in your trading so if your equity curve is sloping towards say for example 70 or 80 at 70 or 80 uh, uh, degrees uh, 70 or 80 degrees that means you made a lot of money uh, and uh, you made a lot of money so you need to be cautious so that's something which you uh, have to look at and i would say it really works very well so to be a, a pro what are the questions that you really need to look at you have to look at first the market related which stocks to buy or sell how many stocks to buy or sell when to buy or sell when to get out of a losing trade when to get out of a winning trade how is your equity curve moving month on month so these are questions which you have to ask uh, so you will have to define okay if you're a short-term trader then don't look at more than 10 to 12 stocks then those 10 to 12 stocks they have to be the most liquid stocks if you're using them technically then you have to have some strategy as to which will give you when to buy and when to sell and how to get out of a losing trade how to get out of a winning trade and then you plot your equity curve and then the most important question is how many shares to buy so that uh, there is a is a is a two percent ten percent rule which you can use ideally two percent ten percent rule means that if your total capital is one lakh rupee so you don't risk more than two thousand on a particular trade and if you have lost ten percent in a month then you should stop and analyze your trades ideally you should analyze each and every trade once you have done but if you, in spite of that you lost 10 percent in a month then you should look at as to uh, stop your trading analyze them objectively and then come back into trading if you're making money then also you have to be cautious because if you are too overly enthusiastic then you could, the market uh, is, a, is a is a great leverer so so you could also give back your gains then the next uh, um, area which you have to look at is self Earlier we were looking at the market itself. There is what is your nature? How well am I suited for trading? How much money do I want to make? What level of effort am I willing to reach my goal? What, if any, is my investing or trading experience? What are my strengths and weaknesses? And how I plan to work on them? So these are certain specific areas which you will have to uh, talk about, look about. And if you have any queries, you can write to us at webinars at theretangentworking.com and we will help you address those queries. So to be a to be a pro, you have to be right and to sit tight. That is something which is the toughest thing to do. But this is the only way to make big money in the markets. So if you really want to, and the and the professionals are uh, once they have a they have a uh, they make money because uh, they don't lose big money. The point what I'm trying to say is that they don't over leverage in one particular trade because if that one particular trade either it will it can make a killing or they can get killed so they don't want to get killed so they will if they if they are taking leverage they'll spread it across uh, across the different uh, positions not only in one particular uh, stock they'll be, uh, take huge leverage so these are certain areas which you will have to consider yourself and also most important is that if you have a winning trade uh, you should uh, uh, try to ride that trade rather than just book profit because if say for example you bought a stock at 500 stock goes to 550 you're making a 10 percent return in a month say for example but the but the stock is is going towards is going higher 600 650 700 so why you are exiting if the stock is going you can trail your stock put a stop loss the only issue is that generally the markets don't go in a straight line up so it's like snakes and ladders uh, you climb the uh, ladder and the snake bites you and again you are back but slowly and slowly you reach your destination so your trail stop loss will help you in yeah. your trail stop loss will help you in markets uh, in markets uh, and it will also at times help you ride the trade so that's something which you have to do. next is if you really want to become a professional then you have to be willing to make uh, willing to lose money because you can't make money if you're not willing to lose money it's like willing to breathe in but not willing to breathe out next is falling markets must not be viewed as places to buy cheap unless confirmed by technicals. Just because a stock has corrected from 500 to 400 does not mean that you jump in and buy that stock. Because you will have to look at it technically. What happened with the pharma stocks if you 
they remember the farmer stocks they were the blue chips and what happened to them they they uh, they fell by 30% 50% 60% that sort of uh, correction was witnessed on those farmer stocks so had you looked at them technically on the charts you would have stayed up so 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 also you should definitely look that it can really help and you will know that you are becoming a pro when you start spending almost as much time thinking about exits as looking for entry so if you start thinking on exit okay when i will exit my trade how much quantity will i take a trade rather than just thinking about when i will buy when i will buy when i will sell that's not a good idea you should think as i said about all these areas which i have already talked about that which stocks to buy how many stocks to buy when to buy when to sell how to get out of a losing trade how to get out of a winning trade how is your equity curve moving month on month so uh, so and what you need to understand is that quiet markets when the markets are quiet they put the amateurs to rest sometimes you will find that the market is trading flat the stock is trading sideways and the stock is not going anywhere and then suddenly the stock uh, breaks out of a consolidation and that is where the professionals uh, have taken the market so if you are watching that particular stock is consolidating and once it reaches that resistance level you can enter the stock so that's a breakout a trade but you can have a stop loss and you can take that trade many times it will make money many times you lose money but your stop loss will protect you most of the time so now i'll talk about the odds against you to succeed in trading you need both confidence and caution so if you if you have uh, having only one is dangerous so if a trader is confident but not cautious so someone is a trader he's confident but he is not cautious so then he might become arrogant and that's a deadly trade for a trader in on the other hand the trader is cautious but does not have confidence so he will not be able to pull the trigger so you need confidence to say this stock is going up my indicator say it will continue to rise i am going to get long and ride this trend at the same time you need to be humble enough to put on trades whose size will not endanger your account what it means is don't be don't build such a huge position that you lose money but that trade goes against you and you lose a lot of money what you need to understand is that, uh, that if you if you have 100 rupees and if you are losing 50 rupees so 50% so you are you are at 50 but now from 50 to 100 you have to generate 100% returns so if you lose uh, uh, lose a higher percentage then getting back is not easy that's the reason it's always advised that you should manage your loss per trade then you have to accept the uncertainty of the markets and be ready to take a small loss without quitting so losses are a part of, of of the game it's just like playing the game of cricket some balls are good so you have to uh, the, the, they'll be uh, you'll not be able to make any uh, runs on those balls but some balls could be hit out of the uh, could be hit for six or four so you'll have to respect uh, respect the market also as is and uh, when you feel a surge of confidence in a new trade it is hard to think think of the downside risk but if you don't do it you cannot protect yourself generally what happens is that if you've taken few trades and you are and the trades have made a lot of money for you you become extremely confident then you place a new trade and then you don't even think about the downside means okay what will happen if the trade goes against you so so when the market goes against you and hits your predefined exit level you have to humbly exit no matter how confident you feel about that trade so if you have entered into a trade your stop loss gets triggered you have to exit that trade you need both confidence and humility now you understand that this is the ability the ability to be aware of two conflicting feelings at the same time is one of the hallmarks of emotional maturity so if you can be at the same time confident and humble then you stand a very great chance of making money in the markets but generally getting these two together is not easy that's why people say that trading isn't that easy now those who concentrate on the rewards which are considerable often push themselves too hard it is better to trade small in order to be more relaxed and enjoy the learning process then you will emerge not only richer but also more alert aware free and at peace with yourself so if you're if you're starting into trading or even if you've been trading for quite some time but you're not trading in a in a disciplined manner you can start but start small learn as you uh, progress and then you can increase your position there are many who have traveled this road made their choices and battle their demons that is their weaknesses growing from a wide-eyed beginner into someone who knows what he's doing the journey had many rough patches but both the trip and the rewards are worth it 
basically what i'm trying to say here is that someone who started trading uh, for him it's a tough battle because he has to uh, he has to first of all understand his own strengths understand his own weaknesses then he has to gain a knowledge of the markets secondly he'll have to have the discipline and the emotional uh, control emotional uh, under control and then from an amateur he goes on to become a, a pro and uh, and 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 uh, the rewards are there in the in, in the in the market if one is there uh, for the long haul because it is very interesting very exciting and the opportunities are always there you don't have to run after an opportunity every day you get an opportunity and if you are trading both the long and the short then for the world entire world is for you so i hope uh, you will give all of yourself uh, uh, to become a good trader so uh, so and wishing you success in your endeavor so i would really want that you should uh, uh, since you have uh, spent the time uh, watching this webinar and uh, trying to understand uh, about how to become a pro how to become a successful trader the mantra is that somewhere or the other you need to have a control over your emotions you have to remain humble you have to have confidence confidence will come when you have the knowledge and you can always gain knowledge but at the same time humility has to be part of there if you are right you're making a lot of money your ego takes over then one wrong trade then you're out of the game so don't let that happen and we are always there for you you have any queries please write to us at webinars at www.dailybooking.com we'll address your queries to enhance your knowledge on technical analysis there are already many sessions which have been conducted you can go through go through those uh, technical analysis sessions they'll give you some very good strategies for trading infrared short term long term whichever your time frame is and uh, with this uh, uh, with this i wish you all the best uh, thank you